Welcome to the Moved to Meditate podcast. I'm your host, Addie DeHilster. This is a place for vibrant discussions about mindfulness, movement practices, and ways to find more balance and presence in daily life. Here, you'll find resources to help you progress on your path, as well as insightful conversations with mindful movement, yoga, meditation, and Dharma teachers from a range of traditions. On this podcast, we spotlight embodied approaches to mindfulness and the more contemplative aspects of movement practice. Listen in and connect to a community of like-minded practitioners. Hello, everyone. Thanks for popping in for this episode of the podcast. Today, we have a delightful conversation with Heather Gross, who is a holistic voice therapist who helps people find authentic self-expression through their voice. We talk about sound healing, why working with the nervous system is so crucial, and how the voice is so connected to our identity. Heather shares her own journey of healing through chronic illness and finding her empowered voice and her joyful passion for gender-affirming voice training. Be sure to check the podcast page on the website at movedtomeditate.yoga slash podcast for this episode so you can find the resources. And included in those resources today, there will be a link there for a free sound bath that Heather recorded for us so you can get comfy, listen to her beautiful singing bowls, and receive some sound healing yourself. Okay, last thing, as we prepare to head into this interview, if you are enjoying this podcast, please share it. You can post this episode on social media and let your friends know about it, or you can give us a review on Apple Podcasts, which also really helps people find the show. The podcast is also now on YouTube, so you can listen, like, and subscribe there too. Okay, with that, I hope you'll enjoy this conversation with Heather Gross. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of the podcast. And I'm so excited to be here with Heather Gross, who I've known for a little while. So I'm really happy to um, hear more from her today about the kind of work she does, because Heather is a mind-body integrative voice therapist and a holistic health coach. And she really specializes in working with gender diverse and LGBTQIA plus singers and speakers singing through chronic pain, and also just the exploration of the voice and sounds as healing modalities. And the way we met was a few years ago that she actually took the last 200 hour teacher yoga teacher training that I taught through my studio spiral path in Los Angeles before I moved. And it was the completely online one that we did during the height of 2020. (laughs) And I remember being so impressed with her meeting her then and the work kind of hearing about what she was doing professionally. And I know that's only grown since then. So today it's going to be a lot of fun to hear more from Heather and learn about what she does in her vocal therapy work and just explore the power of the voice. So welcome, Heather. It's it's so fun to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I was so grateful that you reached out and for you for providing a space where folks can share the work that they do. Yeah, my pleasure. Do you want to start by just telling us a little more about yourself and who you are and what you do, where you are, all that good stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. So as you said, I'm an integrative and holistic voice therapist, vocal coach, and holistic health coach. And I specialize in gender affirming and trauma informed voice. And I help my clients find and love their voice and live a more embodied and authentic life. So important. Yeah, and um, I integrate various healing modalities into my voice work as well in order to calm the nervous system, reduce inflammation, access the breath, and explore the voice. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I want to dig into some of those benefits of this kind of work in a little bit, but I want to just kind of start like with 
how you even got interested in this path of studying vocal therapy and is, do you have like, I imagine you have like a degree in speech language pathology or something like that. <laughs> and like, what is your journey with your personal history with all this? Yes, absolutely. So my fascination of the human voice began at a very, very young age. I've been singing since before I could talk. And <laughs> I love that. <laughs> ever since I can remember, I was always vocalizing and I, I was just always humming or singing or vocalizing. So singing has always been my greatest passion and form of expression since very early childhood. Um, but I do have a lot of early memories of struggling with significant muscle tension throughout my upper body and mm -hmm. particularly around my throat. And it impacted my ability to sing at increased volumes. I had difficulty um, belting and yelling and screaming. And I just, I remember just wanting to like, just let my voice be heard and just let everything go. But like I, there was more in there and you just couldn't get it out. Exactly. <laughs> and that was always a struggle for me from childhood to adolescence to college aged years. And I worked with various voice teachers and I, I wanted someone to just like go in there, like get inside of my larynx and just, <laughs> <laughs> just like flip a switch or like open that thing up. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted someone to like fix my voice. And, and the fixing was that I, I thought there was something innately wrong with my voice or something mm. wrong with me. I felt a lot of shame and fear around using my voice and I would push and force my voice out only to experience more, more tension, more pain. Um, and then I worked with a voice teacher in high school um, who taught me to love and care for my voice. It was just a completely different approach to thinking about voice. And I became a lot more compassionate towards my voice. I learned strategies to increase my volume in a healthy way um, and to really, you know, tune into my voice. And just, she used to say, just sing. Don't think about it. Just sing. <laughs> and that's when I really decided I would dedicate my life to helping others find their voice. Oh, I love that. And I can relate to a lot of that because I don't know if you know, but like I, I have a music background and yeah, I do. I majored in flute performance and it's yeah. a lot like singing without the vocalization because mm -hmm. there's a lot of like the resonance in your nasal and vocal, you know, yes. your mouth, your mm -hmm. head, like all of that. And you learn that like to produce a good tone is not about like, to force it and push it harder, like push more mm -hmm. air through the instrument. It's more about relaxation and resonance. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, um, you know, helping people find their voice took on a whole new meaning for me when I was in college and had a traumatic experience where I tried to voice no I don't want to do this and tried to to scream and my voice literally would not turn on oh. and um, I physically couldn't turn my voice on because I was in a freeze state and that was kind of the moment where I said I like made a deal with my voice like we're not gonna lose each other ever again we're going to we're going to be loud, we're going to live vocally, that's the name of my business. We're going to scream and it's going to be heard. And from there, all of my sort of chronic stress and trauma overfilled my toxic bucket <laughs> and I suffered from chronic illness and lost my ability to walk and and lots of different um you know, chronic symptoms and throughout chronic illness was when I, I really found my voice again and my, where my scream was finally heard because I became my own health advocate. 
and I'm now on a good healing path. So um, I share that because it's such an important aspect of what I do and now implement all of the mind-body modalities that have healed me into my work. Yeah, thank you for that. And I think that really grounds the conversation in how important the voice is. It's Mm -hmm. not just this nice thing for like the art and beauty of singing, which is wonderful, but it has so much to do with like who we are and how Mm -hmm. we take care of ourselves and express ourselves and embody our identity. And I think it's easy for a lot of us to overlook that and the potential held in our voice. Do you want to say a little more about like what is so powerful about working with the voice? Because it it sounds like it's been very central to your whole healing journey. Absolutely. Yeah. So the voice is physical and metaphysical. I, I, always say that we have different voices. So we have our inner voice, which is our intuition. And it's that voice that we hear when we we have that gut feeling. Um, And it's, to me, that's our authentic voice. And it becomes silenced through experiences, you know, traumas, deep rooted beliefs. Um, And then we have our physical voice, which is the physical manifestation of our inner selves Um, And we have our authentic self, our authentic voice, which is when the inner voice and physical voice align. Mm -hmm. Um, We have our empowered voice, which is the voice that comes out when we need to become our own health advocates or we need to say no or we need to set boundaries. Um, So our emotions, experiences, traumas, deep rooted beliefs all become housed in our throats and impact the way that we communicate and the way that we voice. And I always say, just as our bodies bear the burden of the toxins in our environment and our food and our throats bear our stories and our beliefs. Hmm. And so the voice is so intricately and intimately connected to our physiology and our spirit. Um, So it's, um, Yeah, there's a lot of layers there. When we were emailing back and forth to prepare for this, you wrote, Mm -hmm. quote, you you can't separate the mind from the body and you can't separate the voice from yourself. You can quote me on that. So (laughs) I did want to quote you on that. I thought that was so great. You you can't separate mind and body or voice and self. Yes. Yeah, because without the person behind the voice there would be no no meaning behind voice. It would just be this kind of static, pure tone sound. <laughs> no inflection, no personality. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, and it's such a big part of how we take our internal world and use it to connect mm-hmm. with other people. We have to communicate to yes. do that. And mm-hmm. verbally is a, a huge part of that. And it's not just about choosing our words, right? It's mm-hmm. it's so much about like tone of voice. We get so much from in conversation, the subtext of reading the tone of someone's voice. And, you know, had a communication mm-hmm. teacher at one time said, um, don't need to worry about choosing your words so perfectly because when someone is with you and they're observing your tone and your body language, they're going to believe that even more than the words. And especially if it's not congruent with the words, they're going to believe that subtextual part or that vocal, Mm -hmm. you know, tone more than even the perfect wording that you came up with. Exactly. You can say the same phrase 15 different times and 15 different ways. I mean, yeah. Well, I also wanted to ask you, so I know you have like that kind of formal training in, in your education, the speech, mm-hmm. speech and language therapy, you know, that work. And that seems like that that might be like one methodology that probably looks a little different from the sound healing realm, which I know you've yes. done some, some more training in 
what's called sound healing, which I don't know that mm-hmm. much about. So I'd love to have you just kind of like describe what sound healing is, what that looks like. I know you've done some workshops and you do sessions with people and just like, what, what is that? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll <laughs> tell you a little bit about my approach and the different healing modalities that I implement into my work. And then I'll definitely share more about sound healing. So I do my formal training or my, my master's degree is in speech pathology, which is a very broad um, field. And voice therapy is, is kind of a niche within the field of speech pathology and gender affirming and trauma informed voice are a niche within voice therapy. So I've, you know, found this niche within a niche. Um, And when I started doing voice therapy, um, you know, I would implement all of the traditional voice therapy techniques and, and techniques from my voice coaching and singing background. Um, But there was, there was something missing from the work that I was doing. And, and at the time I was, I was separating the mind and the body and the voice because I thought that I had to, I thought I had to, I'm a clinician. I have to fit into this box and follow <laughs> these rules. And, <laughs> and um, I knew innately, intuitively that there was something missing from the work that I was doing. Um, and so as I was healing myself, I was healing my mind and my body and my voice, I started to implement some of those, those techniques and those modalities into the work that I was doing. So I started implementing somatic practices to align and balance the nervous system. And I started implementing coaching to release limiting beliefs about the voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I started implementing breath work at the beginning of each session, um, which, which is so powerful for resetting the nervous system and bringing the client from, you know, the outside world to this sacred refuge, this sacred space. Um, and of course, exploring the physical voice with evidence-based voice therapy and voice training techniques. Um, but continuing to tune into what feels authentic in the client's body and and now I implement um, sound healing into my sessions to stimulate the the parasympathetic nervous system and there's nothing more healing than the sound of our own voice I love that and I love how much you emphasize like the nervous system as well yeah. because that ties in so much with the tension that can restrict the voice and all of the the kinds of like traumas and things that maybe why we're restricting our voice on some level. Um, Absolutely. And then the sound healing work, is there like vocalizing, toning, are there instruments? Like what, what, what all comes into play with that? Absolutely. Yeah. So I remember going to my first sound bath in, I think it was 2000. 19 or 2018 and I was living in Austin and it was something my therapist recommended to me and I'm so grateful that she did because I can't even describe the the calmness that I felt and I just, I fell in love with it just right then and there. And I remember saying to myself, I wish I could do that. I wish I could get trained in that. But then for some reason, I didn't think I could or, or, you know, just didn't think about it at the time. And then when I moved to Southern California, you know, there's sound baths every week. You can find (laughs) everywhere. So I kept going to them and, and I said, okay, I need to look for a training in sound healing. And so I did, I did a training, um, last year and it was an intensive training in a certification in sound healing. And we learned how to lead sound baths and one-on-one sound healing sessions. And we learned how to use different vibrations and sounds and instruments to heal the mind, body, and spirit. And, 
Um, sound healing is the use of vibrational medicine to create balance in the physical and energetic body. And, um, you know, at first I thought like, this is very woo woo, but <laughs> it's, it's far from the clinical side that you were trained yeah, in, right? Exactly. And that's, that's why I love it so much because <laughs> I mean, bringing the, the clinical and the woo woo together and the, um, and I, I do believe that there is going to be research on this and this is going to be evidence-based. There's just not enough. Um, but but anyway, all I needed to know was that it helped me. It helped me yeah. heal. And that was enough for me to want to share it with the world. Um, so a lot of the, the sound healing work is, um, you know, releasing blocked or unexpressed emotions throughout the body. And that's a huge part of what I do with the voice, mm -hmm. um, you know, unlocking literally unexpressed <laughs> emotions and feelings and um and authentic truths you know i help people speak their truth um there's so many benefits to sound healing as well um but i implement it into my sessions usually at the beginning we'll start with you know breathing and and sound healing um but when i notice that my client you know, need some nervous system support or there, um, there's some resistance in terms of allowing the voice to go. I will, I'll get out my sound bowls and we'll, and I'll just, I'll see this, this transition in terms of, you know, how they're carrying themselves and it's like their, their stress just melts away and it's amazing. I love that. It's um, it kind of adds some supportive element of, you know, vibration that they can meet and then they can yeah. kind of work mm -hmm. with it themselves and, and recreate it in their own way. Exactly. Um, I love it. Um, tell me a little more about the kinds of clients you work with and like who benefits from vocal yeah. therapy, probably everybody, but <laughs> who in particular? Yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. I think everyone can benefit from checking in with their relationship with their voice. Um, but um, I work primarily with um, gender-affirming and trauma-informed voice. And I began working with gender-diverse clients as a voice therapist at the beginning of my career. Um, and I actually started at, at like a, you know, a general speech therapy private practice, and I would kind of forge my own path in terms of letting everyone know, you know, voice, any voice clients to come in, put them on my case. So nobody else wanted to work with voice because it's a niche. Mm -hmm. So I would be like, yes, give me all the voice clients. And all or most of those clients happen to be looking for gender affirming voice training hmm. and um I can't even describe like the feeling that I had when I was working with those clients um I felt like I was right back in my in my safe space back in the theater um I felt aligned and connected and I could I could just be me um and I had this deep inner knowing and need to serve the transgender population from a trauma informed lens. Mm. Um, and that, that could be such a, a key part of that transition, you know, mm -hmm. of if you've been conditioned in one gender and you're finding that you affiliate mm -hmm. more with a different gender or a different expression of gender entirely, yes. like your yeah. voice is a big part of what indicates and expresses that. So that really makes yeah. sense that people need support with, you know, not only like how their physical appearance expresses gender, but their sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for a lot of my clients, the voice is kind of the, I don't want to say the last step, but the, it's like the, the aspect that's holding them back from really stepping into their authentic, true expression um so yeah my clients are the most 
amazing people in the world. <laughs> they're gender diverse, neurodiverse, trauma survivors, chronic pain warriors, dreamers, artists, creatives. Um, so grateful to get to work with the the folks that I get to work with and um yeah and we we get to just like be our authentic selves together and sing and make sounds and <laughs> it's so beautiful because like anytime one of us gets to be ourself it gives permission mm-hmm. to everyone else around us like hey it's okay yeah, to be yourself exactly. <laughs> show up and be yourself exactly we need more of that in the world mm-hmm. A lot more. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> oh, do you also work with, with like performers and actors and probably some overlap yeah. with the, the gender affirming care as well? But yeah, it's actually most of my clients are singers and actors and performers. Um, and it, it just feels like everything has aligned because I started my journey in the theater as a performer and, um, you know, the theater was a place of acceptance and validation and that was my safe space. I got to, I got to witness people being themselves, living as their, their true selves in the theater. And, and I think that's where this journey began. Um, and it's my hope to provide an unconditional embrace um, for this community that's given me permission to be myself. And that's why I do what I do. I love that. And you've touched on this a little bit, like why it is so important to take this holistic approach and and really like work with the wholeness of the person. And and that that means pulling Mm -hmm. from different modalities and You've named a few, the sound healing and then the more traditional vocal mm-hmm. therapy. And what else do you include? I know there's your yoga training and mm-hmm. your mindfulness training. Like what else is involved? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm sharing everything that that heals me. Um, I'm sharing all of me and everything that that has helped me. And that includes breath work, yoga, um, mindfulness meditation. Um, you know, I always try to center the client before we move into voice work. Um, I recently became certified in integrative nutrition health coaching, um, which was where I learned to be my own health advocate. And I integrate not so much nutrition. I mean, I might share share some things that help me, but nutrition is so individualized. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the the mind body approaches that I learned there. Um, the breathing, the you know how to become your own health advocate. So many of my clients, um, you know, are denied healthcare or. Um, they don't feel heard in, in doctor's offices. So, um, that, that part of my experience, I, I bring in and, and, you know, I'm a health activist and advocate as well. Um, and lots of somatic approaches, um, lots of, you know, somatic and trauma healing approaches that have helped me. What are some of the benefits that people gain from this combination of all these different tools and in this work? So many benefits. Um, I know you touched on a few earlier, but I want to like tease those out. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of the voice and really all of the modalities, um, some benefits that these may lead to can be, you know, increased feelings of euphoria, alignment, increased happiness, authenticity, um, you know, being able to really step into your, your truth. Um, and there's lots of other, you know, physical health benefits as well. Um, when we're talking about using the voice and singing and, and voicing and, vocal toning, um, 
including, you know, breath control, regulating heart rate, regulating blood pressure, managing gut motor function. I think a lot of us struggle with our gut health. Um, Managing the activity of the immune system, um, reducing, you know, systemic inflammation and balancing the microbiome. (laughs) That's an amazing list. And I'm sure there's even more. And a lot of that seems to connect to the nervous system as well, because the nervous system regulates all of these different systems in the body. And, you know, we know like that, that brain gut connection is, is Mm -hmm. also connected to the vagus nerve, you know, this amazing part of our nervous system. And, you know, when I think about working with the vagus nerve vocalizing, it's like one of the tools Mm -hmm. I really think about. And yes, so, yeah, it's amazing because we're, it sounds like you're using the nervous system tools to kind of help people into this work, but then mm-hmm. it begins to become this good feedback loop where like the vocalizing they're doing will stimulate their vagus nerve and support their, their nervous system in general and create like better yeah. physical conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like the, the nervous system gives the green light for releasing your voice and making yourself heard and living your truth. Um, And that's why I always start with that because in order to, to do voice coaching and, and vocal therapy, um, the mind and body have to be in agreement that this is safe. This is okay. This is great. This is positive. (laughs) So, you know, using our voices, are it's such a vulnerable experience so I always um want to start with with the breath that makes a lot of sense and that you can't just like tell yourself or tell someone else to like speak up or use your voice or say it loud and (laughs) proud you know it's not enough to just like think the thought we have to work Mm -hmm. with like the body and the nervous system and what's in the way um, creating the challenge with this. Absolutely. Yes. And I experienced that firsthand when I tried to push my (laughs) voice out and it did not work. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, it's really important to do that work with somebody that you trust because I can even speak just from like trying to be a musician and Mm -hmm. going into lessons where if the teacher was kind of intimidating, it was really hard to like play my best Mm -hmm. in front of them because there's like this fear of judgment and criticism. And and yet you're supposed to do this like vulnerable thing of like letting this music out of you and, (laughs) you know, and it's technical, it's technical and it's physical, but it's also like your heart is, is there. So there's just a lot of layers to it. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) I agree with everything you said. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like when we think about the traditional practices that like you, you partake in as I do, like with yoga and and meditation, Mm -hmm. that a lot of them actually include the voice. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we've probably missed out on this in Western traditions for a long time, but like in yoga, there's chanting, Mm -hmm. right? There's work with the throat chakra, you know, Mm -hmm. in Qigong, there's practices with like healing sounds as well that I've kind of run into recently. Mm -hmm. And in Buddhism, of course, like we have the practice of wise speech, which is kind of like about using our voice for communication and how we bring mindfulness Mm -hmm. to that. And Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a little more because you, you alluded to this before, but you know how working with the voice has this kind of like spiritual connection mm-hmm. for you and your clients in addition to all those physical and psychological healing aspects that we talked about. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we do implement vocal toning into the work that we do. Um, we do lots of like yawn sighing, like sighing out and working with different um, resonances. So when I first start working with a client, we explore, you know, where do you feel your voice coming from? 
and let's say they feel their voice coming from their chest, um, but they they want to feel their voice coming from their their throat or their mouth or their nasal passage, nasal cavity. Um, so we'll work with different pitches and notice the different vibratory sensations. Um, notice where they feel those sounds coming from and you know this idea of like where do you want your voice to come from like where do you want to feel your voice is both physical and and spiritual Um, because you're you're feeling your voice coming from a different a different place in your body um and, and I think of, for a lot of us, it would never occur to us we have a choice about that. Right. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And yeah, most people don't think about like, where is my voice coming from? Or where does my voice vibrate when I when I speak? <laughs> and like, if I'm really sure of myself, maybe it's coming from one place. Or if I'm really questioning what I'm saying... <laughs> Right. Maybe it comes from somewhere else, depending on how I'm feeling and who I'm with. And yeah. Yeah. And maybe you want your voice to, to fluctuate across different contexts, different situations, Um, but also different tones um, stimulate different, different energy centers throughout the body. So um, I actually have a crystal sound bowl for each chakra and um, when I'm doing a sound healing session or leading a sound bath I always start with um, vocalizing at the different tones with the sound bowls and wow it opens up so many repressed emotions and um, people cry and people share you know their stories with me and it's just incredible to to witness and um and to be in that, that presence of healing. That's really amazing because it's, it's probably even like pre-verbal or non-verbal on some level that and the way that you're entering into it, at least, and maybe something that they wouldn't have been able to name until it's, it's kind of been evoked in this work. And then maybe they can share mm-hmm. the story after, or maybe it's just like, Hey, that, stuck thing it got to move and it's shifting right right yeah people will actually come up to me and they're like this blue bowl this one because they I have all different colors but like this blue one wow that opened up something within me or that <laughs> that yellow one that I didn't even know I I had that emotion stuck within me um so it's pretty incredible <laughs> Do you find uh, clients who are like skeptical about some of the the more like energetic aspects of this and you have to sort of ease them into it or um, or is that just something they, they get it when they experience it? I have in the past and I'm like, okay, no worries. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to, you know, bring too much spirituality into this. Um, but for those clients, I will talk about the, you know, the research behind it and, um, you know, because breath work and yoga and, and, you know, there's research behind those modalities. So I will talk about the benefits of, of those. Um, but of course I'll never force anyone to, <laughs> to do anything they don't want to do. They're pretty count- counter into, I mean, contradictory to your intention with these sessions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, more recently, I mean, my clients have been so soul aligned and um, so open to just, the healing process and learning about different modalities. And um, I had a client recently, she was struggling with so much tension. And I said, have you ever done sound healing? Have you ever been to sound bath? And she said, no. And I, I, you know, led her through a, a condensed sound bath breath work, um, you know, lying down in Shavasana, just getting her really calm. And she said it was the the calmest she had ever felt in her life. 
<laughs> and then her voice just felt, it sounded so free and so clear. So there are definitely um, people who are just really, um, who really benefit from it. That, that doesn't surprise me <laughs> that people, you know, really do find that that special like sense of being able to relax into the process mm -hmm. through the sound healing avenue. And I love that. Mm -hmm. If someone is listening to this episode and they're starting to get really curious and they've, they've maybe never mm -hmm. thought about doing voice work before, but they're starting to think about exploring some like voice centered healing do you have suggestions on where they could start with that? That's a great question. Um, so I would definitely recommend starting to explore the breath, starting to explore the nervous system and find healing modalities that, that speak to you and help you. Um, that's number one, because feeling safe and mental health is my number one priority when it comes to voice work. Um, in terms of the physical voice, I would say, you know, start exploring where you feel your voice vibrating when you're speaking and start exploring, you know, speaking at different pitches and different, um, with different vibrations. Um, you know, you can try speaking up here, try speaking here, try speaking down here. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just start exploring, working with your voice in different ways. Um, another thing you can do is you can start listening to voices that, that make you feel happy and safe. Mm -hmm. And, and the goal is never to sound like anyone else, but Sometimes we can explore our voice through other people's voices, through listening to other people's voices. Um, and even if you don't know the technical terms of what they're doing with their voice, maybe start to explore, you know, what do you like about that person's voice? Um, and you can start to, to kind of explore those things in your own voice. That's really cool to think about listening to others and, mm -hmm. um, voices that that kind of put you at ease and maybe like voices that don't and yes. <laughs> starting to to sort of identify what some of those traits might be do you have um like singers or actors in mind who like you'd love the sound of their voice do you have a favorite well, <laughs> random <it's>... question <laughs> no no that's a fun question um, <laughs> funny because I always wanted to be like a belter, like a, you know, belter. like a really powerful singing voice. <laughs> yes. And I tried to like, you know, I tried to make my voice sound a certain way. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I was always a Kristen Chenoweth, you know, <laughs> that's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. If you're listening, Kristen Chenoweth, I love you. Of course, she's um, a top <laughs> listener of this podcast. So <laughs> She never misses an episode. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she's really been like my my voice hero ever since I was young because she's also this very petite, small body with this huge voice. And um, her voice was kind of what I modeled my voice after when I started exploring my own voice. Um, and now I have more of my own authentic voice, but... Um, yeah, she was definitely my, my voice model when I started singing. I love that. I don't think I have one. I can't really say. So I'll have to do some, some listening and let me see know whose voice I really resonate with. <laughs> That's something for sure people mention about like listening to guided meditations that, Mm -hmm. it'll be like, oh, I really liked the voice that teacher had, or I, yeah. I, didn't, I couldn't listen to that one because their voice was too distracting or whatever. Yeah. And I, I think it's like, it's not inherent in that person's voice. We just all have these unconscious preferences probably for voices that we enjoy more than others. <laughs> exactly. exactly. 
Yeah, and it's it's such a visceral experience to yeah. listen to someone's voice. And there's also a, a trust component. When you're going into a meditation, you have to feel like you trust the person who's leading the the meditation. So if if there's a voice that that make, doesn't make you feel at ease, it's kind of hard to to allow yourself to to go into that to be guided by them (laughs) yeah yeah and I think like as someone who does lead guided meditations it's so easy to slip into kind of a sing song like or like a meditation voice and this is my special and (laughs) you know teaching things like yoga or meditation you kind of have to be aware of that it's Mm -hmm. it's so easy to slide into that and it is. Using your authentic voice is probably something that anybody who speaks like that as a teacher or as part of their living should think about. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Any professional voice users? <laughs> hey, anyone. <laughs> anyone. Because we all use our voice on a daily basis. We all, we all talk. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you wanted to make sure that we touched on in this conversation? I think just really reiterating that, you know, the goal is never to sound like someone else or this ideal voice. It's to sound like you. And my clients come to me for my, you know, my expertise in the the transitioning voice but you know I always say you are the expert in your voice and your your authentic voice is already there because it's it's inside of you we just have to unlock it and I can help I can help individuals do that in a safe and vocally efficient way Um, but I'm not the expert in your voice. I'm the expert in my voice. Um, and I happen to know a lot about voice as well. (laughs) So so it's, um, it's very individualized and, um, yeah, I just never want anyone to feel like they have to sound a certain way or they have to fit into, you know, this expectation of what their voice should sound like. It's not about putting on yet another mask for someone else, right? It's just, it sounds like such a process of self-discovery. It is. That's exactly what it is. Wow. Um, So thank you very much for sharing all about this, this beautiful work that you do and this area of healing that I think a lot of us don't know a lot about unless we've been involved in it or benefited from it in some way. So I think it's great to um, spread the word a little bit and maybe more people will be exploring their voices after listening to this episode. (laughs) That would make my heart so, so happy. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. (laughs) How can people, um, further connect with you, Heather, and learn more about your work or things you might be offering. Absolutely. So my website is livevocally.com. And my Instagram, I have an Instagram, and that's also livevocally. So it's at live underscore vocally. I'll link to those for sure in the show notes on the website. Perfect. That's so cool. And I saw that you did a workshop with our dear Peggy Burt (laughs) not too long ago in the LA area. So it's great to see you're doing some, some group events. And what, what was that one exactly? Yes. So we did a sound bath slash vocal sound healing um, in addition to a guided labyrinth walk and it was wonderful. It was all about authenticity and tuning into your inner voice and it, it all aligned. So it was wonderful. That sounds phenomenal. Yeah, I, I would have been there. I wish I could have been there. 
<laughs> you do a lot of your work online. So I do a lot of my work online. Um, when I do workshops, those are in person. Um, but I recently started seeing some some clients in person as well. So it's pretty exciting to to get to work with people, you know, in the the not the virtue verse, <laughs> <laughs> the real quote quote real world. <laughs> not that online isn't real, but yeah, but yeah it's it's really nice to get to connect with people mm-hmm. in that way and really like feel the resonances of each other's voices and feel each other's energies. So. Yeah. I was wondering about that with, with like the singing bowls and the, the yeah. thing sounds don't always like, it's hard to sing together on zoom because yeah. there's like the delay mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, I was wondering kind of how you deal with that. But it sounds like you've, you figured yeah. it out. Yeah, I mean, when I'm using my microphone, the sounds are a lot clearer, but it's really nothing like in person. But um, my clients do still benefit from the sound healing. And I mean, in terms of voice therapy and voice coaching, it works really well online. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've been doing that for you know, since the beginning of the pandemic. So well, and with the specialization you have Mm -hmm. for that group of people, it might be hard to find a good provider. And so Mm -hmm. it's good you have your services online so people can find you wherever they might be. Absolutely. Yeah. Accessibility is definitely one of my, my deepest values. So, um, yeah, I see folks all over the country, which is really, really exciting. That's awesome. Thanks. Well, thank you again for taking the time to have this conversation and share a bit about this topic. And I feel inspired to be a little more aware of my voice. So <laughs> thank you so much, Heather. It's been really, really fun. Thank you so much for having me. And as you know, I can talk about this stuff all day. So Um, My face hurts from smiling so much. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good problem to have. It is. It is. (laughs) I'll go do some um, mouth relaxation. Oh, because you know all the right exercises to do. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) I love it. Okay. Well, thanks again, Heather. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was so great to reconnect with you. So that's today's episode. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share it with a friend, subscribe on YouTube, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and help others find it that way. To learn more about my work, the Moved to Meditate class library, courses, or teacher trainings, go to movedtomeditate.yoga. This is Addie D. Hilster. Thanks so much for listening.